so I am going to be uh, doing some of the commentary, the lead commentary for Sky this year for the F1, which is a bit crazy. I'm doing three races, uh, Imola, Austria and Baku. Um, and yeah, it's all a bit mental, really. So, mental. you know, got, I got like 400 followers off the back of it just yesterday on Twitter, which I thought was quite cool. And I felt mega famous. So, yeah. <laughs> And this I'm, I'm catching the, up to you, Tom. Won't this be the first time that Crofty's not been doing lead commentary for how many years? Is it like oh, fully? Well, I, well, I think well, Sky got the rights in 2012, so minimum. Uh, we're now 23, so over, over a decade. Yeah, for sure. Um, big news. Yeah, and look, I mean, I get it. 24 races is such a. It is. I think we all feel it really. Like it's so it's so intense, and especially when you're traveling. You know, everyone just thinks it's. Um, you just rock up on the weekend and you don't and as a commentator i think i think a lot of people underestimate the amount of work you actually have to do because it is all encompassing you have to know everything all the time and be constantly talking you say a lot of work right what how many notes are you bringing to a to a race like what what, to what extent are you having to do your research beforehand just to well i i I suppose you, uh, you do like Well, it's the start of the season now, isn't it? So I'm doing like bulk research, which is I have a big folder, which I do take with me. But obviously, I'm not looking at that during the session. You can't read everything that's going on. But a lot of the things will be like, right, who what's changed in the regulation? So I'll literally be reading the FIA technical and sporting regulations. And handily, they highlight whatever's changed in red. That's Um, good fun, mate. So (laughs) you love that. (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a long process. But I've got to know because it might come up that we've got to talk about this thing's changed or I've got to remind listeners what's happened. And so I'll be doing all the kind of bulk wider research. Like, so who's left the FIA over the last few months, uh, as well as obviously the, the Hamilton news, the Stein news, making sure I'm on top of all that. Who's gone push rod, who's gone pull rod. What the hell is a push rod? What the hell is a pull rod and figuring out a way to try and explain that in a simple way, because the main stuff I do is for BBC radio five live. And sometimes when you're on the main station, um you'll you'll get people who aren't f1 fans uh, or who are who are not as uh nerdy about it because they'll be listening just into sport in general so if you'll start if you'll end up talking about push rod or you'll you're, or even understeer and oversteer you've got to have a simple way to try and just explain that to people even drs you know constantly explaining what that is for somebody who's just tuned in because they might hear drs but they might be massive cricket fans and they're just like well hang on a minute i thought that was a cricket term not not an f1 term um so then you're suddenly you, you just got to be able to do that so that that's kind of the wider research and then on for actual each race uh i make my trap map because uh a, a lot of the races i've not actually been to in person so just to make sure i try and like get the lay of the land ahead of time uh, little stats and facts so i can fill uh the time when there's a red flag or if there's a safety car i've got like some fun things to say that is just red flag filler. I'll do a lot on just red flag filler. Um, Who's won the race over the last how many years it's been on the calendar, the latest news and talking points coming into that weekend. Just just everything. It's all encompassing. And and you'll see it's never finished. It's like revising for your GCSEs or whatever it might be, except the exam happens on on Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And then then you just move on to another exam. So that's kind of how I would equate it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've known I've known about it for a little while. I just wasn't really allowed to say anything. But so, like, and it, and it didn't feel real really until uh, yes, yesterday. So what, Thursday, the twenty second of February. Um, so that that was uh, that was it was it was cool. I mean, it's now now I'm like right, okay. For my first races until Imola, so you know I've got a bit of a, a, a run up to it. Um, I'll be doing all the other races uh, for, for the BBC, so that's a good good sort of uh, you know get myself in, in, entrenched for it. But um, it, I don't think it will feel real until I'm actually there doing it. And you know I do get nervous. I still get nervous no matter what uh, it is that adrenaline rush. And and this is a a massive sort of platform because it's not just the UK. It's it's the US, it's Australia, it's India, you know, and one one wrong word and <laughs> you you will be live TV, mate. <laughs> yeah. So but I mean I get to work with uh Karun Chandok uh for two of them as as the co-commentator and Martin nice. Brundle, which is gonna be oh. like insane. Ooh. Cause that's I grew up watching and listening to Martin Brundle on on commentary, you know, and to to be the guy that's suddenly alongside him. You know, I grew up watching Sky F1. I remember when they first the first ever race for sky f1 was 
Australia 2012. And I remember getting up in the middle of the night to watch practice. And I and I would, because I'm a nerd about it, I, I listened to what like Simon Lazenby said and Crofty, what was his opening link? And, and then I would write my own opening link and then like rewind it and practice that kind of thing. So that that is a bit of a, it's quite a nice sort of full circle. But yeah, I'm, of course, I'm, I'm quite proud of it. I, you know, but it's, uh, I've got to do the job now, you know, for like a racing driver. It's one thing to get the job, then you've got to do it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I didn't time this. I, I didn't think they'd be literally day after uh, the, the, each other in terms of announcement. But uh, yeah, <laughs> Net, uh, try to survive. Netflix is out is out today. I mean, I'm I'm just such a small part in it. I'm just I'm one of the the commentary voices along with uh, with Ben Edwards and, and Alex Jakes. So um, so it was just cool to like I had to audition for it and then get in a booth and then see how how that show comes together. Like the edit job is in insane like you, you, i just cannot believe how they get 10 episodes together and then they've just finished and then suddenly that you know they're out of testing right now for bahrain filming again for season seven so so yeah so i get you know uh i'm in that so there's a lot there i spent three days uh over the last few months going into a studio in london and and uh basically going episode by episode um voicing uh various lines uh I th- what happens essentially is we all voice the same lines uh, mm. We give different versions of it, and then basically they just chop and change whoever, whoever says it in the final in the final edit. Um, so, uh, so yeah, but it's I've seen all ten episodes already, so it's it's a it's a good it's a good show. It, it, obviously, the, the Hamilton Ferrari thing is kind of I don't want to give too much away yet for those who haven't seen it, but it, it's it, it does. There's a good bit of illusion there, even way before anything mm. actually happened. Um, and good for Steiner, of course, is another star of the show. Um, so, and it's quite a dramatic ending actually for him. So I would, uh, I would definitely, uh, watch it all the way through. Harry, just to give everyone an idea, like how much, how many of the lines that you filmed and recorded were actually used in the finished piece? What percentage are we talking that actually makes of the cut my actual the, personal voice of everything you personally put into it? So everyone thinks, uh, that you, the, the lines are like really scripted, just based on what they film, but they do take a lot of it from real lines that are said, you know, I'll have to throw in the occasional contact or it's chaos in turn one. But, you know, uh, I had to do a line that was actually said by Lawrence Barreto. And then there was Naomi Schiff who had said a line on the Sky broadcast. And then we would give our, our own versions of them in a more punditry style. But equally, then you'd also, uh, you would have to kind of um, give different takes on, on each line. You're a bit disappointed or a bit more energetic. Like I think I did, I delivered one line, which was, um, and uh, Nick DeVries on a flying lap into turn one and he's in the wall. And that was my sort of like disappointed take. And they said, that's pro- they said it was great, but probably a bit too disappointing, a bit too judgmental. <laughs> uh, so, so, so had to change it slightly. And you've got to do it sort of as live because you're following you'll have a script in front of you with all the lines and then you'll have a screen which is showing the footage and then a red light comes on when you're supposed to talk and then you'll just give it your your best shot and then you'll just go script by script by script i do about five or six scripts in a, in a session across a, across a few hours um and then you'd have somebody in your ear telling you okay great let's move on or can we do that again or let's just pick that line up that kind of thing so um that kind of yeah is a sort of behind behind the scenes little glimpse at it but it's a, it's a, it's a hell of a thing to put together.